So, corporate, what do we do and why is it so important? Basically, business people are very good at what they do. Okay? They have a skill set or a passion that is driving them into business to help them grow their businesses for themselves and their families. Okay? That doesn't necessarily mean they can write about it. You can be the best plumber, the best chef, the best surveyor, the best town planner, whatever it is on the whole world planet, it doesn't mean that you can necessarily express that well to other people and to target your audience effectively. Okay? So this, the one I'm going to show you here is a case in point. And I just want to set up for you too that the samples that I'm using here, I've taken away the branding and any identification of them because this is not a finger pointing exercise. Okay, this is merely about how corporate can help businesses. What happened here is I had this client approach me on the street, hand me a brochure and said, tell me what's wrong with this and walked off. So I went back to my office and I started going through it. And the brochures are basically something that you can hand to someone and they can very quickly say, oh, this is what you do and this is what you can offer me and yes, I do need some of that. I started going through this and I know a little bit about what this person does. And I started pulling apart local area, computer network, IP phone system. If you sit down and you know, you've got your PTSN, you've got all this, it's, it's very jargon heavy. You, if you sat down and engaged with it, you could work out what he was talking about, but that's not the whole idea of the brochure. It's supposed to be a quick get in, get out, yes you need it, come and ring me up. So I sat him down and I said to him, the simple fact of it is that you have this level of knowledge. You're an expert in your business. You know what you're talking about. You're pitching this here. These people don't understand your background. They don't have that knowledge to bring to the whole thing in the first place. So you've pitched it here for people that you're trying to target here. You've missed your audience. Then I had to sit him down very quietly and say there is another issue with this brochure. And that is the fact that this brochure that you've sent out, which is a representation of your business and the professionalism of your business, is full of spelling errors, grammatical errors, and formatting errors. And I had to take him through that. And he was very disappointed, um, as you can imagine. And his disappointment was heightened when he told me that he did not get a single query or referral from sending out this brochure, oh, and he had no issued more. he had issued eight thousand of them. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's a very, very expensive proposition with your printed materials to be sending these things out because. You have to get them made, you have to send them out, and then when they're out there, they're out there. People have them on their fridges, on their office desks. Okay, they're looking at this. And they're thinking, okay, well, why would I want to work, you to work in my business because you can't take care of your own business? It's a professional representation of you. Now, online, yes, online can be changed with the click of a mouse, but until you realize the mistake and then you'll correct it, there are potentially millions of people around the world that are looking at your business and making judgments about it. So it's really important that the message is targeted and effective and succinct and correct to start with. So the other thing that we do at Corporate, amongst many others, is web copy. Basically, people are using information differently these days. They're accessing it in different ways, all right? So the last time I picked up the Yellow Pages, you know the book for Yellow Pages, was to prop open a door. If I'm looking for a service, I Google it. I get onto search engines, I do something else. And people are doing that these days, and people are looking for information in different ways. People do not read for detail anymore. They don't do it. People read for instant gratification for the information they are looking for. And if your website doesn't have that information that they're looking for quickly and easily, they're in a click, they're gone, and they're not going to come back to you. And every business needs a website now. You know, even if you're targeting business to business, business to whoever on the street, you need a website. It's very important. So what we do at Corporate is we make sure, yeah, and you need to make search engines your friend, and there's lots of different things that search engines can do, and I'm not going to go into that, it's not my business, but you need to make sure that you have your keywords. Keywords are vital, because search engines love them, and that's what they use them for. Now, the point of difference that we have at Corporate is that the messages that we create actually read well. There are lots of websites you will come across that have got every keyword under the sun to do with what they do, but you can't read it. It doesn't make any sense. It's hard work to get the information. So what we ensure is that we're able to create web copy that's readable, that's got all the keywords in it, and it's also original. Because original text is really important with websites. 
you, some people, they set up a website, great, what am I going to put on? Okay, let's go to all of my competitors, let's cut and paste all the stuff, put it on my website. Search engines, no. I don't know how they know, but they do know. And they're not going to rank your site. So it has to be original text. In addition, we also uh, work with companies to review their web, web copy regularly. Because the thing with websites is it can be the nicest looking website in the world, the best written website in the world, but if it sits there for months on end and doesn't get changed, search engines lose their attention and off they go and go look somewhere else. Okay, so you stop ranking. So that's another thing that we work with businesses on. Okay, so web copy, it's also important to make sure that you pitch the language appropriately. This one here, you know, it's a broad ranging website. He's talking to anybody or anybody high school kid up to a CEO of a business about doing their web design for them. So we had broad ranging language. Same with this one here. You know, it had to be quite simple targeted language because we're talking about people from all over the world interested in coming to Cairns and having a fantastic meal. Okay, this business, they've had a website, it was up and running and they said, you know, we want you to review it and tell us what you think. Now these are business advisors pitching themselves to businesses. And I said to them, where you're currently pitching yourself is the high end of the market. Nothing wrong with that. But if you also want the startup people to come and talk to you and need business advice, you're losing them. You know, school teachers who decide they're going to start their own business really, really need you, but they can't understand your website. They don't know that they need you because you're not telling them so. So we broke it right down, we took a lot of the jargon out of it, and we made it into easily accessible language, still business to business language, which is pitched a little bit higher, but we were able to do that for them. All right, effective communication. One of the things that we do is work with businesses to make sure that the message that they want to get out is getting out and that the print materials and online materials are effective. Who can tell me the problem with this? It'll look nothing like that when I unwrap it. <laughs> that too. And that drives me nuts. I hate that. Anyone? No, I hadn't cut it off. No, this is the whole thing. This is the photograph, oh, is actually. Took. Okay. Yeah, so um, the samples I'll show you, actually, the whole ones now. Um, this was in a public place. I took it. And I think the purpose of this, in a shop with four walls, that hanging on the wall, fantastic, go and see our cabinet, excellent. This was in a food court situation. Now, where this was, was equidistant to three other places that sold similar stuff. So, in fact, they're not marketing their own business at all. They're sending them somewhere looking for a roti. <laughs> and if you're busy and you're looking for a feed, you're going to go somewhere, no, roti, I'll have a sandwich, thanks. So, when you're developing your materials, you have to make sure that they're going to work for you no matter where they end up. And this isn't working for them. Nice post. Yeah. Okay. Avoiding missed messages. Really important point. The English language is a rotter. It's a horrible thing. It is the fifth hardest language in the world to learn. But I'm Russian, Mandarin, Danish, and I think Hungarian, you have English. Because we have rules. You just don't use them here, you don't use them there, we don't know why, but you don't. It's hard. And so people write. And they, they, they're sending out their messages and they know what they mean. They have no issue. The trouble is that sometimes what they think they mean is not necessarily what they're saying. And uh, I'll set up the context of this for you. This is a very large organisation. I was editing their annual report for them. And uh, one of their departments had new thermometers and they were implementing new temperature procedures. Uh, and uh, this is one section of road. I'll get you to read the highlighted section. <laughs> Chef's temperatures are taken with handheld probes. Who's doing that? Are they wearing locks? You know, I... I I thought, oh look, and I knew what they meant, but oh dear. So like I said, it's avoiding those mixed messages and making sure that what you're writing and sending out to the great wide world is actually what you mean it to say. All right, so something that we can definitely help with. I did actually have to rewrite that. Now, social media. Oh, it's beyond me. I don't get it. I don't understand it. You know, I tried Twitter once. I got on there. I tried to tweet. No, tweet, tweet. Tweeting on Twitter, and you know, I very quickly came to the conclusion I am too old and too ugly to learn another language. I don't want to know. I can't read this stuff. 
So I've got this wonderful company, Townsville Social Media Marketing. They do all of this for me. They Facebook, they Twit, they do all those things. And it's good, you know, it gets my website ranking and all that sort of business, and it means I don't have to think about it. However, in that same sphere, LinkedIn, love it. It's a business to business forum, and that's why I love it. Okay, it's about business people connecting and using each other's services. And uh, I know for me it's generated me some work. I know for Linda and her factoring business, it's also worked really well for her. So uh, we create LinkedIn profiles for professional people that are looking to connect with other professionals and use each other's services or build their businesses. And uh, it really is a very effective mode, and that's something else that we offer. I couldn't provide a sample here because you just can't depersonalize them no matter how much you try. Editing and proofreading, I have touched on this before, and I'll take you through this again. It is so vital that what goes out that represents your company is actually representing your company in a professional way because people are going to remember it. They are not going to want to deal with a company that they open up a brochure and it's full of spelling mistakes. It doesn't look good. So editing and proofreading, absolutely vital for anything you're doing in your business. Now, even large organisations can fall foul of this particular rule. And I'll take you through a couple. I was watching TV one morning, making breakfast for the family. And on those morning TV shows, it pops up down the bottom saying, coming up such and such. And I saw it. And I wasn't quick enough to take the photo. But there I was poised for the next time they showed it. But 15 minutes down the track, they fixed the mistake, which was very disappointing. However, I got on their website a couple of hours later. Still there. So I won't get you to read all that. I'll just point it out to you. Common mistake. Desserts. Two S's, please, people. Okay, this is a this is a national broadcaster on their website. There it is. Please proofread. Oh, the next one I'm going to show you is a prime time TV show. And I actually had this tape and I was wandering around. It came up with this thing. It was a letter from a, a serial killer. And uh, I gotta tell you, I would be offended if I was a serial killer and this was the letter that they wrote. And immediately I looked it up. Anyone see it? There. There, exactly. And you know, there with a capital two, that's just shocking. But there, and I looked it up, even the Americans spell it EIR. I did check. So, you know, I had to TV show people. All right, next one. <laughs> He's got everything else right, and it even rhymes occasionally. This is my favourite. This is my favourite. This is from the Commonwealth of Australia. This sign appears at every airport uh, in the country. What's the problem? Not enough S's in position. Thank you. I know. They got the fine one. The Commonwealth of Australia. That's an oxymoron. <laughs> See, I love this. This is great. And I've even actually seen this appear on TV a few times as well. And they've got interesting language use here. Maximum penalty exceeds 10,000. You know, is it 10,001? I mean, what's the deal? Or are they just hoping that they do CPI this? Each year it yeah, that's up. it. It goes up, so they don't need to replace the signs. That's right. They do need to fix that, though. It's just embarrassing on so many levels. Valentine's Day. Anyone see it? Disappointed. Should be a possible. Yeah, need an apostrophe here, an apostrophe oh, here. They, Disappointed yeah. is rather interesting. I get, I get the See there? We'll need the beverage, right? Yeah, there should be a comma there, though. <laughs> yeah, really? You really want to be picky. Yeah, but this was professionally printed on this beautiful, glossy thing. And it's outside this wonderful little forest. Happy 80th birthday. Editing and proofreading. Nothing wrong with this. Not a thing. Except. Really hope it wasn't prophetic, you know, but I'm pretty sure that this poor old lady was kind of thinking, do I go to bed tonight? What are they telling me? So vital. You know, this is going out to the wide world. You know, a bit of attention to detail. Yeah. The town's bully does things on that. It's my uh, Michelle's grandmother. She's still alive. Oh, God. there you go. Is she still with us? Yes. Oh, good. Thank goodness for that. They raise an update for you. <laughs> <laughs> the next day, that was their fault. Did you expect that? Yeah, I mean, you're on your 80th birthday, you get that in the newspaper, you're thinking, really? Okay. All right, so uh, just to round, round things off, I can't believe it was an employee. There you go. Um, I cannot take any credit 
for this last business, but I want to show it to you because it really is an amazing example of how effective words and effective visuals can work together to create a really memorable marketing moment. <laughs> no. I know! And I reckon they must have got him in the car and actually measured him up and said, please don't put it in any yeah. way. You know, and comfortable living specialists. What a champion. I would hire this guy. And you know, he's driving around town, people are going to remember this. Sure. <laughs> I thought it was brilliant. So basically the final message that I have about what Corporate Right does was that? I wonder what his kids think. <laughs> <laughs> walk down the street oh, like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's my <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. Any questions or anything you'd like to clarify?